that's tool one. <laughs> tool two. Many times people have no idea what is the area of rooftop real estate in the city. And usually when you talk to people in cities, they say, oh, it's, it's not that much because there's these very tall buildings. They only have this limited area and lots of people in it. Not actually the right way to think about the problem, but let me show you, okay? So now we're going to turn to using the buildings to be a source of energy supply. So uh, the second tool, we're going to show you how uh, we have been able to map this rooftop real estate, which we think is vastly undervalued and offers the so-called prosumer opportunity, producer of energy and consumer of energy, prosumer opportunity. So to begin, cities are aware, more aware than society generally in this opportunity. Look worldwide at what percentage of energy comes from renewable sources for buildings. Worldwide, it's about 26%. If you look inside cities, it's 41%. So cities have already begun to think about uh, this problem and or this opportunity rather, and using this infrastructure dimension. So, um, how uh, fast are cities moving? Cities already are declaring 100% renewable energy targets for themselves. Uh, and they are not a small number, you can see. We have 70 cities already. And if you look at the past legislation in these cities for their uh, requirements, that number will triple by 2030. Okay? So they set the targets. 2015, 2020, 2025. By 2030, we're going to have over 200 cities, just currently, that will uh, have that, that target. That's impressive. This is the bottom of Manhattan of New York City. This is not New York City. This is just the bottom of Manhattan of New York City. Okay? But because of laser emitting uh, technology, we can map with a high, high degree of accuracy what the building landscape looks like. These red dots are part of nearly uh, six and a half billion data points for New York City alone. Six and a half billion. I just take one small diversion. In the last century, I analyzed databases. And to do that analysis, you use something called IBM cards. And you punched the commands for the program. <laughs> <laughs> you took trays <laughs> of IBM cards to an input-output window for them to run the analysis. The dream state was a few thousand data points. Six and a half billion <laughs> It's beyond uh, imagination uh, in the last century. With this uh, data, we can now build a full 3D model of nearly one million buildings in New York City to a high level of accuracy that was unthinkable in the past. So, to, again, the younger members uh, here in the seminar, you want less. <laughs> you have a real opportunity, okay? So watch a 3D model being built in the lower part of Manhattan. That opportunity is the basis for getting a real understanding of the amount of solar energy generation that is possible with our buildings. When you build that 3D model and now estimate how much electricity will be generated, removing shading, removing angles on roofs that are in the wrong direction to collect en uh, energy, removing uh, building obstructions on the rooftop, removing all of those, 
you will use only around 50% of the roof area of New York City. But watch what will happen in terms of electricity generation from existing solar technology, not new technology, Hanwha technology. You can go into the market, you can buy it today, okay? <laughs> so for this uh, uh, graph, we are using the hourly electricity consumption provided by the utility to uh, New York City. Hour on hour, how much electricity is used by the building stock? We then took the first tool, applied conservatively 20% improvement, self-finance, okay? That's the gray, so now the load curve, as it's called, looks like the blue. We think that the early effort to try this prosumer model will be with public buildings, because public buildings can borrow in very low interest markets and can have a longer payback period. So we begin in uh, the public sector buildings, and those green reductions are using only about half of the public building rooftop real estate. So we're not, we're not taking everything. We're taking only about half, okay? And uh, you see that reduction from public buildings only, okay? Remembering our clock is ticking, and we have to find a way to act soon, okay? We think you can start here. Now, if you use the remaining commercial building stock, again, we only use about half of the rooftop real estate for those tall buildings. New York is like many cities in Korea, vertical cities, yeah? Wait till you see <laughs> how much electricity generation from solar you can receive. During the hours of 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. or so, New York City will generate more electricity from its rooftop real estate than it currently needs. You remember how crazy the idea was about rooftop real estate? <laughs> okay. New York City, during the summer, when it has its highest electricity demand, May and August, it would actually be a net supplier. That gets you carbon neutral and better. Overall, throughout the year, 60% of daylight hour electricity needs can be provided using existing technology and half of the rooftop real estate in New York, okay, to achieve uh, this, uh, uh, this. It is uh, a sizable opportunity, 10.6 gigawatts of capacity. That's big. In this uh, map, you can see what are the specific areas of New York City that hour on hour will generate more electricity <coughs> than the peak. And the answer is four of the five boroughs of New York City will be net energy suppliers from this approach. All the green and the light green are net energy suppliers. There's only one area that cannot meet its energy needs using its rooftops. It's logical. It's Manhattan. <laughs> okay, but a lot of that surplus can be sent to Manhattan. How about a city you know something about? How about Seoul? What happens if you use the tools uh, in Seoul's case? Again, May and August, two periods of the year when a lot of electricity is used and sold. If you use 20% uh, uh, standard for uh, building energy performance, you get a, re a new shape for your uh, city's uh, load impact. It looks like this. If you use, in this case, about 60% of the public building area, there are more flat roofs in Seoul than there are in New York. <laughs> so, okay, you get to use a little more. If you do that, that green bar, and you have more public buildings as a percentage of all buildings, you get this reduction. Can 
you imagine Seoul <laughs> being a surplus energy city <laughs> between 11 and 2 p.m.? Can you say? <laughs> between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m.? We think this is an understatement, but we have to await. We don't know that for a fact. We need to get the LIDAR data to get a better estimate. Okay. Uh, 66 percent of daylight hour could be uh, served uh, average uh, throughout the year. 66 percent of the 